again. All right. So we're back for our last volumes by rotation. Today, for this video, we're going to be doing cylindrical shells. So a cylindrical shell, my favorite or most easy example to show this to you is a nice piece of paper. Okay? A cylindrical shell literally is just the outline of a cylinder. So a nice hollow cylinder. We're going to be finding the volume of this shape. Okay, we'll refer back to the paper here in a second. But we're going to work through an example, of course, using my favorite function, x squared. It helps us keep this nice and clean, simple, before things get a little bit more complex. So if we take our y equals x squared, and I'm going to go till x equals 3. So just a sketch, I'm going to call this x squared, and we're going from 0 to 3. Okay, can we see that? Yeah, good enough. Okay. So what we're going to be doing, instead of rotating around the x-axis, we're going to be rotating around the y-axis. So my y equals x squared, and we are going to rotate around the y-axis. So I'm going to take this shape, and we're going to rotate it this way. So we're going to end up seeing it mirrored like such. Okay, so we're going to be taking what are called cylindrical shells like this and as we go out the shells get taller to create this volume. So our shells, like I showed you with the piece of paper, are going to look something like this. Okay, so then the question is, how do we find the volume of our cylindrical shell? We can make this actually really, really nice. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my shell right here. I'm just going to cut it clean, and I'm going to unroll it. And this is what it's going to look like. There's my cylindrical shell. Okay, again, referring back to my piece of paper, if I have my cylindrical shell, which is just a hollow, hollow cylinder, and I cut it, there's my cylindrical shell. Nice. Do you know how to find the volume of this piece of paper? Right? To find the volume here, length times width times height. All right. Our length is this piece. If we refer back to our paper, our length is this piece. How do we find the length of that piece of the circle? Oh, my answers are wrong. I'll figure it out, I guess. Okay, so we find around the circle like this, around the circle that circumference, that length distance, is 2 pi r. Circumference. That's what's going around our shell. This is our length. Our height is going to be based off of whatever our function is. So that is just our y value or our function. And our width Length, height, our width is just our dx. Okay, so our basic general setup for these integrals, we're going to be going from A to B. We're just finding this volume here. So length times height times dx. So again, our main goal, we need to figure out what our radius is, and this time we need to figure out what our height is. We can simplify this, and I can factor out the 2 pi. From A to B, radius times height, dx. 
okay? So, if we were to come back to our example here, I need to figure out what my radius is and I need to know what my height is. Radius, we're still basing it off of our um, line of rotation. So my line of rotation is my y-axis and I am going to find the radius of that circle by using this x value. So my radius is x. So 2 pi, my radius is x. My height of each shell is based off of what x value I'm using. So we use our function x squared. So my volume here, we're going from 0 to 3. So 2 pi, 0 to 3 of x cubed dx. That's going to give me the volume of that formula. Length, 2 pi r, height, x squared, width, dx. Anti-derive this. I'm going to end up getting x to the fourth over 4 from 0 to 3. 3 to the fourth is 81. 81 times 2 is 162 pi over 4. And those are both divisible by 2. So we're going to get 81 pi over That's it, okay? This time, all we're doing is we're finding the volume of this rectangular prism, where our length is the circumference around the circle, so 2 pi r. Our height is based off of any function or space between two functions. And then our depth is dx. I wish I could turn and say any questions, curiosities, thoughts, but I will be looking for my email. So if you guys have questions, I will go over them. Um, we are going to take this example and we're going to change our line of rotation to see how that changes our radius. Our height's not going to change based off of where we rotate, but our radius will. So let's take a look at that. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and start over here. I'll rewrite that guy for us. Okay. So again, 2 pi times the integral from A to B, radius times height, dx. All I'm looking for is my radius and my height. Okay. We're still going to be using x squared. But now, we'll still use 0 to 3. We're going to rotate around x equaling negative 1. x equals negative 1 is a vertical line, so we're rotating around that vertical line. Our graph's going to look like this. So if we got this guy, and we are going to rotate around this line, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mirror that over. We're going to see this. This is our rotation, all right? What I need to know, my radius. Based off of our line of rotation, my radius, wherever I hit, this piece right here is x plus 1. So my radius is x plus 1. That's it. x value plus that 1 unit of distance. My height is still x squared. So when we plug this in here, 
We're going to have 2 pi from 0 to 3 my radius, which is x plus 1, times my height, which is x squared. And that's my function. Okay? I can integrate it by hand, which I'm going to do real quick because my answer key that I made for myself is wrong. But this is right. Promise. Okay? I'm going to simplify 2 pi from 0 to 3. I'm going to distribute in and I'm going to get x cubed plus x squared dx. And now I'm going to integrate. So antiderivative of x cubed, x to the fourth over 4. Antiderivative of x squared is x cubed over 3 from 0 to 3. And we're going to times this by 2 pi. So I'm going to plug in 3. 3 to the 4th is 81 over 4. 3 cubed plus 3, sorry, 3 cubed divided by 3 is 9 times 2 pi. Common denominator, I'm going to change my 9 to 36 over 4. So 81 plus 36 is 119. 119 over 4, and then I'm going to simplify the 2. So I'm going to get 119 pi over 2. So as long as we have the setup, we know how to anti-drive, we know how to evaluate, we're just trying to set this up. Okay, we also want to make sure we're practicing typing that into a calculator. I know we don't have access to the inspires right now, but hopefully sooner than later we will have that. Um, again, I really want to ask if you guys have questions, but main idea, find your radius, find your height. Okay? When you rotate on the left side of the y-axis, you're going to end up adding to your radius, okay, x plus blank. That's going to happen every time, as long as our function was on this right side. So we're going to go through one more type like this, and then I'm just going to have you practice and hit me up with some emails if you got questions. Well, let's just keep this rolling. All right. So this time, we are going to rotate around the line x equals 4. Okay? So all I'm changing is where I'm rotating. So let's get a visual. I want a bigger visual than that. There we go. So we're going to take this shape and we are going to rotate around this line. So again, I'm just going to reflect it. So it looks something like this. And our shells are going to come in and they're going to build like this. Okay? Again, all I need to figure out is my radius and my height. We haven't changed the height. We're still using the function x squared. So our height is x squared. To find our radius, based off of our line of rotation, my radius is here. This full distance is 4. And then we are going to be subtracting the x value we're using. 4 minus x gives me my radius. 4 minus x gives me that radius. So 4 minus x. I've got my radius. I've got my height. I'm ready to solve. So 2 pi. From 0 to 3, my radius, which is my 4 minus x, 
times my height, which is x squared dx. I'm going to distribute. So 0 to 3, 4x squared minus x cubed dx. And now I'm ready to integrate. I'm going to evaluate this expression. So antiderived 4x squared, 4x cubed over 3. Antiderived the x cubed, I'm going to get x to the fourth over 4 times 2 pi, evaluated from 0 to 3. So 3 cubed is 27, divided by 3 is 9, times 4 is 36. 3 to the fourth is 81 over 4, and I'm going to times that all by 2 pi. All right, so I need a common denominator, so I'm multiplying 36 by 4. So 36 becomes 144 over 4 minus 81 over 4. And then 144 minus 81. So I'm going to get 2 pi times 63 over 4. Reduce my 2, and I get 63 pi over 2. Okay. The main idea and the hardest part of all of our volumes of rotation, finding your radius. Okay. Once you find the radius, then you're just plugging it in to our very generic, never-changing formula. I need my radius, I need my height. If it's a washer, I need the outside radius minus that inside radius, finding those areas, okay? Please, please, please email me, me oh wow, <laughs> email me if you have questions. Don't be afraid to ask, I wanna make sure that we're still working towards our AP goals. We wanna pass this test. I got you guys. I miss you. Have fun. Bye.